I learned about ISS microcurrent neurofeedback from a good friend of mine, uh, a doctor named Bob Rosen. And he's a friend with Barry Bruder, who of course uh, has developed ISS to what it is today. And uh, Bob knew that I had experienced uh, traumatic brain injury and that I suffered from PTSD. And he felt that the ISS treatments might benefit me. Uh, prior to my first ISS treatment, the, the symptoms that I was experiencing were your classic PTSD symptoms. I, I had a lot of anger issues. Um, a lot of the activities that I'd enjoyed prior to suffering traumatic brain injuries and PTSD, skydiving, uh, scuba diving, motorcycle riding, things like that, that I used to love to do, I no longer wanted to do. Um, any type of activity that involved a group of people, I didn't want to partake in it because I just felt very uncomfortable around people. Um, and the anger, I was just angry all the time about everything for no apparent reason. And then after I received my first treatment, um, and also I might add that I had severe migraine headaches. I would get two or three of those a, a week sometimes. And the, the actual evening that I got my first ISS treatment, I was experiencing a migraine headache. And Barry came to my home. He explained the apparatus to me and what I would, you know, gonna, what was going to happen to me as far as the treatment. Um, and then he administered the treatment. And it only took about 20 minutes. And then after he left, it was uh, late in the evening. I went ahead and went to sleep. I had the best sleep that I've had in probably five or six years. The migraine headache uh, abated. And the next morning when I woke up, I, I literally felt like I was an 18 year old kid that just got handed the keys to a new Ferrari. I was just in an unbelievably good mood. Um, every morning when I would wake up, I would have severe pain in both of my feet, my ankles, my knees my hips and my lower back. It literally felt like somebody had been beating me with an ax handle while I was asleep. So probably for the first five or 10 minutes when I would wake up every morning, I, I would limp around until I could basically, you know, bust the rust off of my joints. At least that's what it felt like. Um, that morning after the first IASIS treatment, there was absolutely no pain in my body. Um, so the migraine headaches, I have not had a single migraine headache since that treatment, which is almost two years now. I haven't had any of those pains in my body um, since that evening. I sleep much, much better. Um, my anger issues uh, have pretty much gone away. And, and I might add that I have a, a six-year-old and a four-year-old, two, two very active boys. Um, and these two can destroy anything at any given time, which would definitely amp up your anger. And even with that, I just, you know, I take it all in stride. So it's literally been a life changing evolution for me to undergo ISIS treatments. Well, if I were to walk into a room with a, a, a large assembly of general officers and, and medical professionals from uh, Navy Medicine, and I had two minutes to t tell them about ISIS, I would obviously explain to them what my situation, my personal situation was both before and after the ISIS treatments. But more importantly, I think uh, people, you can tell them something and, and they'll understand it, maybe. But if they see it, they will believe it. And so I would say, give us 10 or 12 or 20 of your worst case patients, guys that you know have traumatic brain injuries, guys that are dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder, guys that are having suicidal thoughts. Give us those guys for four weeks or even five weeks, and you'll see an unbelievable difference in their quality of life, their general attitude, and coincidentally, um, and, th and that, of course, would be a safety and, and, you know, welfare of the men type situation. But as an added bonus, their operational capability would increase. Their marksmanship would get so much more focused. 
their ability to stay awake longer periods of time because their body's more well rested. Just unbelievable difference in their performance. And that's on top of correcting whatever issues they have coming into the, to the treatments. If you were to be able to provide ISIS treatments to frontline uh, operators, guys that are gonna go into harm's way, um, and they're trained as well as they can be, you can take them even a step beyond that by giving them the ISIS treatments. Any stress that they're feeling will pretty much wash away. Their focus will become laser-like. Um, their abilities to think and process will speed up. Even their vision, I've experienced that my vision has improved from using ISIS treatments. So you can take somebody that's playing at the professional level and make them into an all-star level performer. Do I believe that the families could benefit from ISIS treatments, the families of the returning warriors? That's a no-brainer. It's absolutely true. Um, because the wives and the children, the mothers, the fathers, the brothers and sisters of, of these Patriots that serve our country, they deal with the stress of seeing their loved one going through these particular maladies that they're having. And so as, a, as an adjunct, they also are suffering. And ISIS can really work for anybody. Um, in fact, uh, anecdotally, a friend of mine who was experiencing uh, PTSD had a dog that was very high strung. And we gave the ISIS treatments to the dog and the dog immediately responded. You could tell that it's even effective on animals. With regards to the question about the University of California at San Diego running an extensive study on how ISIS treatments affect individuals that have traumatic brain injuries and post-traumatic stress disorder. And the fact that we're just running up against a brick wall getting individuals that have those symptoms to volunteer to undergo the study. Um, it, to me, it's mind boggling. And I don't necessarily think that these people are wearing their injury as a, a medal or a badge of honor. I think that they've had just such a horrible experience dealing with military medicine and then the veteran affairs um, medical department and any of the state or city or county provided medical um, outlets that they have, I think they've just, they're so disappointed and so felt as if they've been let down that they don't want to go down another dead end road. And the thing I would say to them is, this is going to cost you absolutely nothing other than an hour or two of your time once a week or every other week you're going to come in and sit down in a room, answer a few questions, and then literally you're going to sit there for less than a half hour while the technicians uh, hook the wires up to the back of your neck and the top of your head. You could read a book. You could watch TV. You could even take a nap while this is going on. And you don't even feel anything while it's going on. And afterwards, it, it will suddenly come to you how much better you feel. And the more treatments you get, the more effective it is. I, who in their right mind wouldn't want to, to take the golden... If there was such a thing as a golden pill that could correct pretty much everything, and it was given to you for free, who wouldn't take it? Well, Barry, to answer your question about the veterans that have the opportunity to, to receive the treatments but choose not to or or don't know about it, <clears throat> I would implore you to do it for yourself first and foremost. But if that's not enough to get you to do it, do it for your fellow servicemen, your brothers that you served with, your sisters that you served with, and do it for your family and the people that surround you. Let's, don't be selfish, because even though you're suffering, you're not the only one that's suffering. All those around you, whether you realize it or not, they're suffering because of your suffering. So if nothing else, do it for them. I mean, hook them up. Get yourself some treatments. Get yourself back on the right track. 
and you'll see the people around you will start to blossom as well. Well, if there's anything I want anybody to know, it's that despite the fact that I've been accused of being roguishly handsome and contemptibly confident, I'm really a nice guy.